Hola everyone! In today's special video, we are honoring the beautiful Mexican holiday Dia de los Muertos which celebrates the life of our loved ones that have passed on the ofrenda. It is tradition to have their pictures, papel picado, marigolds, pan de muerto, and their favorite food. We are going to be making many treats inspired by Coco the movie, like the sugar skull Mickey apples, a breakable skull box with kicksicles and strawberries, Rice Krispie Treat Pops and Empanada Skulls that my abuelita will be making with us. So vamanos, let's celebrate our families together and meet abuelita in la cocina. Mi nieta y yo vamos a cocinar carne guisada molida. En otras partes le dicen picadillo. Nosotros los puertorriqueños le decimos carne guisada. Algunas personas cuando la cocina le dice el picadillo, nosotros los puertorriqueños le decimos carne molida guisada. Los ingredientes que vamos a usar son cebolla, pimiento, sofrito, ajicitos, cilantro, hojitas, salsa de tomate, hojita de laurel, Comino, orégano, thyme, um, paprika, y esta es la hojita de laurel, paprika es pimentón, y el pilón. Y eso es todo lo que vamos a usar para nuestro carne guisada. Abuelita, what are you doing now? Voy a cortar un pedazo de pimiento. Ahora necesitamos un pedacito de cebolla. Un poquito de cebolla. Así. Ahora vamos a poner la carne. Un poquito que se caliente. Y ahora ponemos la carne. Sofrito, hojita de recao, cilantro. Sounds good to me. Va a oler rico. Vamos añadiéndole cebolla, el pimiento. Vamos a añadir un poquito de comina, un poquito de thyme, bastante orégano, paprika o pimentón. Y todo le añadimos la salsa de tomate. La hoja que la abre. Sí. Me la sal. <risa> Yo me smell cámara. Delicioso. Delicioso. Delish. <risa> Ahora le vamos a añadir. Almost, almost forgot. Yes, never late. <laughs>
Nunca, nunca es tarde para abuelita. <laughs> That's right. Angela, y el último ingrediente, ¿cuál es? Amor. <laughs> Vamos a añadirle un poquito de agua. Vamos a bajarle el fuego mediano. Se ve preciosa. Maybe 13 more minutes. I hope you had fun with Abuelita en la cocina. Now it is time to enjoy the picadillo inside of the dough for the empanadas. And it's super easy to make, muy fácil. All we need is to combine one and a half cups of flour with three quarters of a teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of baking powder as our dry ingredients. And I'm cutting in four and a half tablespoons of manteca with a pastry cutter. You want to cut this in until the mixture is crumbly. Don't let this dough fool you, it appears very dry. But after we add the egg white and water, it is going to be muy bueno. To the crumbly mixture, pour in one egg white with a third of a cup of water. And give everything a good mix to form it into a dough. Before we can start to knead and roll it out for our skull pan, don't forget to get the pan ready by brushing it with a light coat of oil. I prefer to use this instead of nonstick spray because the empanadas tend to brown too much in this pan. To get rolling, I'm sprinkling some flour onto my surface. Whoops, I put a little bit too much there. You won't be needing that. And I'm kneading the dough together into a smooth ball. And guys, I want you to comment below if you have made the pizza skulls before. I know you are going to think these empanadas are delicioso. The Wilton skull pan I have makes four skulls at one time, and the Nordic wear one makes six. So for mine, I'm dividing the dough into four sections and rolling each piece so that it is large enough to cover the skull head in the pan. Basically, it's going to look like a tortilla. If yours still looks too thick, just stretch it out and roll it a little more, un poquito más. Take your sheet of dough and place it over one of the skull cups while gently lifting and pressing around the edge without tearing the dough. Then go ahead and fill with that picadillo. I use a few generous spoons to fill the pan without overstuffing, just enough so you have enough room to close it up and wrap the edges in like a burrito. When making these, they will turn out excelente as long as your dough is big enough so that you are able to wrap it closed because we don't want the seam opening up and any of the picadillo to burst out. Our empanadas are almost ready for the oven. The final step is to make an egg wash with one egg yolk and a small amount of water, as you can see from my tiny cup, and brush it onto the empanada. The egg wash also helps the seams stay closed while they are baking in the oven. You can pop them in to bake for 20 to 25 minutes at 350 degrees or until they are a beautiful golden brown. Once they have cooled down, carefully flip the pan onto a board to remove your empanadas. I love the impression on this pan, amazing on the inside and out. Next for our sweet treats, we are making these Mickey sugar skull apples with my updated caramel recipe. It is best made in the microwave and uses the Kraft brand caramel. And if you've seen my other caramel apple video, this is a slightly different method, but we are prepping the apples the same way by cleaning them in very hot water that is mixed with one tablespoon of white vinegar and turning them around for 10 seconds. This step removes the waxy outer layer to help the caramel stick to the skin. Once you have your apples cleaned, 
give them a good dry with a towel. I especially dry around the stem area to remove any water that may be hiding in there. And last, you can twist, twist, twist off the stems. A big difference in this technique is that the apples are at room temperature and you can insert your candy apple sticks and dip right away. The caramel recipe in my other video works best with chilled apples, but for this one, stick to the room temperature apples. One last time, take your towel and dry the top in case any juice escaped from inserting the sticks. And to prepare the caramel, I have three bags of Kraft caramel bits. These are so convenient so you don't have to unwrap them and they melt faster. Also going in is 30 grams of butter. Four and a half tablespoons of coffee creamer. Mine is the caramel macchiato flavor for an extra rich and delicious taste. And three tablespoons of water. It is time to heat our caramel in the microwave for two minutes. And also, you are going to need a deep measuring cup for this. Mine holds eight cups. It sounds like a lot, but we don't want our caramel to overflow. That's no bueno. After two minutes, stir the caramel and pop it back in the microwave for another two minutes and finish by heating in one minute intervals until the caramel is between 240 to 245 degrees. I always use my infrared thermometer to check that the caramel has reached that range because although it may be bubbling and appear ready, your caramel will not be thick enough and will run down your apples if it's not there yet. Let's dip our apples by angling the measuring cup and swirling the apple around until completely coated. I let the caramel drip off and wipe the excess off the bottom with a rubber spatula. I don't shake them too much to prevent air bubbles. And also, I don't dip all the way to the top. Since we are double dipping into the chocolate, the caramel can ooze out of the top from underneath. My important tips for this chocolate are to dip at no higher than 84 degrees to ensure there is no elephant skin and to thin it out with your choice of paramount crystals, oil, or easy thins to achieve a smooth surface when double dipping, otherwise it will appear clumpy. And I also use a deep dipping container, my favorite is this noodle bowl, to cover your apple in easy one, two, three. To create the cute Mickey ears, I dipped some vanilla wafers with this awesome dipping fork which I will link in the description box down below. This gadget saves you lots of chocolate and will also work really well for dipping Oreos instead of loading up an Oreo mold with lots of chocolate. If you would like another option, I showed making the ears on the pumpkin Mickey apple with marshmallows which you can check out in my other video. Finally, it's decorating time and La Catita is excited to help us decorate. On the ears, I'm piping around the edge with royal icing and a tip number three. The icing is between piping consistency and flooding consistency so the sugar is able to stick on while holding its shape and top with a sprinkle of lime green sanding sugar. The best part about this technique is it's so colorful without having to dye multiple colors of icing or color the chocolate with different candy colorants. Once all the green rims on the ears are complete, allow them to dry before piping a tiny heart in the center with a tip number three and sprinkle on some gold sanding sugar for the boy design El Nino dusting off any excess with a brush. And for the girly design, La Nina, I did the same using pink and purple sanding sugar. While we set the Mickey ears aside to dry, I cut black fondant circles out with a cookie cutter at the eyes, los ojos. You can also use junior mints, but they just aren't as flat. Then pipe a curved arch for his brow and top with blue sanding sugar to make his blue sparkly brows. 
In between each application of sanding sugar, I let it dry to prevent spreading different colors with each other. And around the eyes, I decorated a circle pattern of dots and topped them with orange sanding sugar. On La Nina, I left her without an eyebrow and piped the dots as well, except I sprinkled on the blue sanding sugar because azul is her favorite color. To bring them to life, I piped on an upside down heart for the nose and a swirled mouth with a piping consistency icing. And don't forget to complete the look with the stitches. Now that their faces are on, you want to attach the ears with a thicker consistency of chocolate that is similar to the texture of a buttercream frosting and dip the ears right in, holding them in place for about 10 seconds as a glue. And once it hardens, you are free to let go. Since the ears are heavy, the thicker chocolate is needed to keep them secure. Last but not least, I dressed up La Nina with a flower that I cut out of orange fondant with a dot of gold fondant in the center and she looks muy bonita. Another creative idea is this treat box with a breakable skull, cakesicles, and strawberries. Starting off with a breakable skull, this mold is a three-part mold which saves you lots of time and chocolate. It has the top layer as well as the middle silicone inserts and the bottom layer with the fill line inside to show you exactly how much chocolate you need for consistent results. I have my chocolate melted to a smooth and fluid consistency to spoon into the mold and spread to the corners until the fill line has been covered. The key is to work quickly so that your chocolate doesn't harden before you close the mold with the other layers on top. Have the silicone inserts and top layer both assembled on the side and sandwich all the layers together to distribute the chocolate throughout the mold. This product really does all the work for you without having to worry about cracked edges. Now I'm chilling the mold for 10 minutes and to remove it, take the top layer off first, then flip it over to separate from the bottom. Gently peel away the silicone inserts and he looks fantastico. No worries if you see any edges that need to be cleaned up. I lightly shave them down with a toothpick to fix that. Feel free to fill him up with your favorite candies and prizes before assembling him. My trick to keeping him from rocking around is to enclose one half in the mold while I brush around the edge with a thin coat of melted chocolate. With the other half swirled around on a hot plate for a few seconds, I heated this plate in the microwave for about a minute beforehand and placed the other half of the skull directly on top. Our Romigo wanted to transform him into a sugar skull, so we're going to paint the design with poppy paint. It is mess free to line a plastic paint palette with some pressed and sealed cling wrap, but first I am painting his eyes nose and teeth gold with an edible paint that I mixed with gold luster dust and a very small amount of Everclear vodka. I recommend to wear gloves in case you need to move them around and I use dabbing strokes to fill in small spots because sometimes the more you press with the brush the paint can rub off. If your alcohol evaporates and the paint becomes clumpy, you can mix in a little more vodka in between painting each section to bring it back to consistency. For our mini lesson on poppy paint, I shake the bottle really well and squirt a little bit onto my palette that was lined with a cling wrap. And my favorite way to create dots is to dip a wooden candy apple stick or lollipop stick into the paint and press it on like a stamp. 
after every two to three dots, I dip back into the poppy paint to make more. Next, with the pink color, I put a small amount onto a thin brush to paint a heart. And to keep your brushes clean, swirl it around in some clear vodka or the paint will dry on the brush. The paint is very sticky and water isn't much help here. With this pretty green color, I painted the swirled lines on both sides of the heart and went back over it with another coat after they dry. Since the teal poppy paint was more navy than I expected, I wanted to make the colors pop with these blue nonpareils by attaching them with dip and hold edible adhesive. If you are looking to try the teal, keep in mind it looks darker when painted onto the chocolate. To decorate the chin, I made a green dot with the stick and small curly shapes with the purple poppy paint and it is much better to paint one layer and let it dry before going back over it right away with another layer so it doesn't smudge. The sugar skull is not complete without a flower crown. I have this rose mold that I pressed several different colors of fondant into and brushed on an edible gold luster dust to give them some sparkle. To complement the roses, I added these green edible gems with a dot of melted chocolate and stuck on the roses with the chocolate the same way. These strawberries in the box are simple designs yet so classic. I have washed and dried these thoroughly. And to dip the berries, I stick some pigs in the center. How fun are these sugar skull pigs that I found at the party store? Another tip is that your berries should be at room temperature for dipping, not cold or you will get elephant skin. Pull the leaves back away from the berry and towards the pig when dipping into the chocolate. For a smooth look, you definitely want to thin out the consistency with oil or paramount crystals. And make your colors with oil-based candy coloring and white chocolate melt as your base. The shades I am using are Color Mill in Hot Pink, Lime, Teal, and Chef Master in Yellow. When picking sanding sugars, I recommend a coarse sanding sugar over a fine sanding sugar for best results and a more sparkly appearance. The Wilted brand has a great selection. To create a gold sparkly berry, I dip the strawberry into the yellow chocolate and coat it over it with coarse gold sanding sugar. If you choose to add sanding sugar while the berry is wet, sprinkle it on right away. Or if you prefer to take your time, you can allow them to dry first and apply the dab and hold edible adhesive. I also like it for sanding my cake pops and apples. Our strawberries look so colorful and ready to decorate. For the skeleton hand, I pressed white fondant into the mold and stuck it on top with melted chocolate along with some small fondant roses. The skeleton hand is very delicate, especially by the fingers, and we don't want his bones to snap, so just be careful and handle him with care. I found these sugar decorations at my local cake supply store and had to get them for this video. They are a great way to dress up any solid colored berry. Just be sure to brush on enough chocolate since they are quite heavy. The last item in the box are these unique sugar skull cakesicles. First, to make the cakesicle dough, Miguel is going to be our helper for cracking the eggs. For one box of Pillsbury cake mix that is any flavor of your choice, go ahead and crack in three whole eggs. And instead of milk, I swear by using heavy cream for a richer dough without being too greasy. Pouring two tablespoons of that combined with enough water to equal one cup of liquid and a third of a cup of vegetable oil. 
our other helper, Hector, wants to help us mix it all up. Instead of putting the batter into a cake pan, I bake them in a muffin pan. That way the cupcakes are easier to crush for your dough. And also the cupcakes are much more moist without that crusty layer that forms on top of your cake. Pop the cupcakes in the oven for 20 minutes at 350 degrees or until a toothpick comes out clean. Give the cupcakes a chance to cool off and you can remove the liners to prepare them for the fruit processor to make the dough. Just break them up and throw them all in there. There's a lot of cake in here so if it happens to get stuck, post a little at a time and resume until the fine crumbs warm into a compact piece of dough with your fingers. Squish it together similar to a play dough and to smooth out the cracks and achieve a smooth texture, I knead the dough on my silicone mat. It helps to roll it into a ball against the surface of the silicone to eliminate the cracks. Since we are not shaping this dough into cake pops, it doesn't need to be chilled for long before using, but you could wrap it up with plastic wrap and store in the fridge when not in use. However, I like to chill the dough overnight if I am making cake pops. To mold the cakesicles, I match the same colors to these strawberries, except I lost my color mill in hot pink. So let's improvise to achieve that color. I have color mill in candy, chef master in pink and red. I mix a little bit of each to make a hot pink and as for the other colors I use color mill in the shade teal, shift nectar in yellow, and color mill in lime. Into a standard size silicone cakesicle mold, drop in a generous spoonful of chocolate that is slightly on the thicker side. When the chocolate is too thin and runny, it's harder to push around without getting bare spots. The key is to coat the chocolate all the way up to the mold so the edges of the shell don't crack. And I'm inserting these glamorous gold glittery popsicle sticks. Push your sticks in directly after molding the chocolate before the hole over the slot sets. I'm chilling the chocolate shell for 10 minutes. And after that, brush on more chocolate near the opening and around the stick to reinforce it and prevent any cracks. Now I refrigerated that for 10 more minutes and the cakesicle dough goes into each cavity. Break off small pieces and press the formate into an even layer. Once you have that foundation down, push the stick in and cover with another layer of dough. Finish by creating a slot at the bottom by leaving some cake missing from that area. We are filling in the slot with extra chocolate to seal any cracks by the stick. My tricks to keeping the bag smooth and flat are to fill the top with the thick chocolate. It's perfectly okay if it's not that neat. It's just important to fill with enough, especially by the corners, so we are able to scrape it off and smooth it out like icing on a cake with a cake comb. The cakesicles are finished with their smooth flat backs. Refrigerate them one last time for another 10 minutes and peel away the silicone, then push with the slot to pop them out of the mold. I especially love how the color of the blue cakesicle came out. To design the sugar skull face, I'm taking my powder puff with some cornstarch and dusting some onto my mat so that my fondant doesn't stick and rolling it into a long oval that is approximately an eighth of an inch thickness. 
and I'm taking this super cool textured rolling pin to make an impression in the fondant. This is what it looks like after going over it. It has a floral pattern. I'm cutting out the shape with a skull face cookie cutter. And when you have that sharp cut, remove the excess scraps and slice the skull in half. Using that same edible pan with a mixture of gold luster dust and Everclear vodka, paint the fondant for an eye-catching gold. The impression looks extra special and decorative, painted with the shininess of the gold. Along with the skull feet, I finish it off with a crown of roses by taking a small bowl of fondant and pressing it into a small rose mold. You can cut any excess fondant around the edges with a knife. When the skull face has dried, brush a thin layer of melted chocolate on the back to stick it to the cakesicle and arrange the flower crown on top. The final treat are these adorable Rice Krispie Pops. The homemade Rice Krispie treats are more thick and less likely to fall apart. I followed the recipe from the back of the stereo box. I did try using this treat sheet and they weren't as durable for this. To cut out the Mickey shape, hammer a Mickey cookie cutter into the block of the Rice Krispie tree and trim around the edge with a knife if it's too sticky to separate. Clean up the edges and press the pack in the Krispies to get the shape more precise. I don't recommend this particular cutter I used. It is best if you can find one that is more deep to cut into the Rice Krispie. Similar to a cake pop, I'm anchoring the lollipop sticks in with a small amount of melted chocolate and twisting in the center to ensure they stay on the sticks. Let's dip Mickey in the chocolate. This is a wide, shallow bowl to cover the surface with an even coat of chocolate. Once it is coated, lift out of the bowl and shake to settle the chocolate. The design to decorate the sugar skull with these same ones I showed you for our cocoa theme inspired apples. Pipe on the outline for the ears and sprinkle on the lime green sanding sugar. Remember to let these set before doing the heart on the ears. For the hearts, I sanded each with the pink, purple, and gold sanding sugar. I cut fondant with small circle cutters. They were smaller than the circle on the apple to scale the size. And I piped dots around the eye with a tip number three to dress it up. Finish them off with their horrid nose and signature stitched mouth. Don't forget the eyebrow for El Nino and the flower for La Nina. I hope you enjoyed making these decorative treats with me to honor Dia de los Muertos and joining Abuelita in La Cocina. From my family to yours, thank you so much for watching. And